Hi, my name is Matt Smith. I'm a regional motion engineer for Yaskawa, based out of Chicago. I'll be going over a Sigma Logic demo for you today. In front of me, we've got a Allen Bradley Compact Logics L35E PLC and our Sigma 7 Sigma Logic Compact Controller. The software I have in front of me is called LogicWorks. It's what we use to commission our Sigma Logic 7 compact drives. In this case, I've got a Sigma Logic driver already set up, so I'm just going to connect to it and do an overview of the configuration software that's free and downloadable off our website. Um, so here you can check and confirm the versions on the hardware. You can configure units. So we work in real engineering units, whether that be revolutions, millimeters, inches. You can set it up for rotary axis as well. So you don't have to worry about encoder counts. It's all using real engineering units. We isolate some of the important parameters for the drive. So there's no big parameter list. There's a couple check boxes and some variables to fill in. And then it also gives an availability of a test run for the Sigma Logic. So before you have it hooked up to an Allen Bradley PLC, you can control the access without writing any code. So we confirm that our power wiring, our motor wiring is correct. We can confirm direction. We can confirm scaling all without writing any code. But from that point on, the Sigma logic has been configured. So what we can do is go back to the Allen Bradley software, RS Logics 5000. So inside of that, I'm connected to our PLC, and we've got our Sigma logic drive added to the network. So it's simply a generic device that is added um, in to specify a certain assembly instance of a fixed size. So once that's added, our AOIs then know how to map the data correctly. So there's a few AOIs that are necessary to get the access communicating with the Rockwell PLC. The first one's going to be the MC FG function block. That gives you status information of the Sigma logic, such as position, torque, and speed. There's also a heartbeat. So if communications has failed, the drive will turn off. From this standpoint, all you have to do is specify the axis. And throughout your Allen Bradley program, you'll use that axis name to enable and control the axis. So the name formatting, you can see, is very familiar to common Rockwell AOIs, such as the servo on. With a click of a button here, we can enable the axis. We'll have status feedback that the servo is on, and then we can get motion out of it. The easiest way to do that is to use the MAJ AOI. So here we've got a simple jog forward where we can enable and toggle the bit on, and then we can toggle it off. As we scroll down through here, we've got other supported AOIs, such as an MAM, a move, so if you're not familiar with how to parameterize a move type, you can always right click on the instruction help. We've got embedded help inside each AOI. So if you're trying to understand how to set up that AOI, you can refer to the help file to understand the units and what direction would be forward. And in this MAM AOI, you can do incremental or absolute moves. We've also got a blending AOI, so you can do two moves together without coming to a stop. Uh, it's helpful for press applications where you need to do a rapid move down close to the part and then do a slow creep into the part. There are also homing AOIs. So those are another one that if you don't know the homing type, you can always go to the help file because we've got a variety of homing types. So inside the help, you can see that we can home to hard stops, just to find a position, home to over travels. All of our Sigma 7 motors come with absolute encoders. So the homing procedure can just be done once and then it's set until something changes mechanically or the motor gets replaced. 
so it reduces on homing configurations and the time it takes to home a machine. That's the end of my presentation on the Sigma Logic. Thanks for joining me.